Today, I'm going to show 10 dangerous entertainments of students in the 90s. I will share with you what I myself practiced back then. Remember that repeating at home what is performed in this video is really dangerous. Smoke flare. We would take red ruler made from a special plastic with a distinctive smell, break it into pieces and wrap it in foil. We would make a small hole on the edge and then we would light it. As a result, there would be a plume of thick smoke ascending from this small piece of plastic. Those who were especially crafty would make a duty self rocket. The stream of smoke was so powerful that it would make the rocket lift off really fast. There was another famous project, a smoke flare from the medicine of a first aid kit. We would buy anodine or hydrogen peroxide urea pills at a pharmacy. We would grind them together and wrap it in a few layers of paper. The cool thing about the smoke flare is that you didn't need to light it up. The chemical reaction would trigger on its own if the smoke flare was left in a warm place. Before a lesson it would be placed on the radiator in the classroom and in about 15 minutes it would trigger a chemical reaction with lots of thick smoke. The lesson was sure to be disrupted. I still remember this acrid smoke having breezed with I could not catch my breath for a long time. <coughs> On Saturday, in one of the USSR schools, lessons were disrupted. Someone brought a do-it-yourself smoke flare. There was another advanced project. A smoke flare from a saltpeter fertilizer. You would buy some at the grocery store. After that, these white balls had to be dissolved in water. Paper sheet had to be soaked in this solution. The soaked paper would be hard to dry up. Then we would tear off a piece of the needed size, fold it many times and wrap it in a foil. That's it. Surprisingly enough, such duties of smoke flare was the most popular in our school, because at least 100 smoke flares could be made from a bag of saltpeter. I remember the whole school smelled the saltpeter. The coolest thing about this smoke flare was to show it to as many people as possible, and to let as many pupils as possible enjoy the thick smoke. That is why we preferred to light them up indoors rather than outdoors. It was best to light them up at school. But we had to be really careful not to fire the teachers not to get to know who did it. I remember how happy the pupils were with such smoke flares, that is why I decided to do something more. Something on a larger scale. I found a big sack of saltpeter at my grandmother's barn. There was lots of waste paper next to it. I made a huge 2 kg smoke flare, carried it in my backpack to school and lit it up in the school toilet before the end of the lesson. The lesson was not over so nobody noticed me in the lobby. When the smoke was in the thick, the lesson was over and the pupils were very surprised. The lobby was filled with the thick smoke. I couldn't even see my hands. I remember the pupils shouting joy and the smoke reached the last floor of the school. I couldn't help laughing when I saw physical education teachers and design and technology teachers were trying to extinguish my smoke flare with buckets of water but it was too late because it had already gone out. Another dangerous entertainment was to light up poplar wool. I remember how much girls didn't like poplar pollen during physical education lessons. It would always get into their noses and their noses would itch. We would help them get rid of it by lighting it up. It would burn out very cool. I remember how we enjoyed the flame rushing along the ground. I wanted to do something more substantial. So me and my schoolmates played too and during the last lesson at school. We went to the river to light up bulrush. I was too little back then and I didn't understand that it would cause harm to the local microscopic flora and frogs would die. I also did not take into account the fact that the weather was so dry and windy. As a result, there was 5 meter tall flame and out of fear I rushed home. The pupils who didn't play truant saw huge plumes of smoke through the windows of the school. On the next day in the morning, I saw that ash was all over the territory of the school. When I was looking at the fruitage of my efforts, I was filled with unexplainable joy. I was in a good mood for at least a few days more after this. Another popular entertainment was lighting up firecrackers. They appeared in the 90s. It was something new and besides they were not very difficult to get. They cost very cheap and that's why we would light lots of them up. When there was a break, firecracker explosions would be heard all over. They would lit up all over, in a toilet, in a backpack, they would drop into hoods. It's hard to remember everything. <laughs> It was considered to be cool if you managed to scare and entertain as many people as possible with your firecracker. So I decided to explode my firecracker in a special way. Once I was late to the lesson and I noticed that in the neighboring classroom people were doing a spelling quiz and it was conducted by a strict teacher. That is why it was very quiet in the classroom. So I decided to act. I carefully opened the door, so there was very little space between the door and the door frame. I threw my firecracker into the classroom and it exploded. 
I heard the teacher cry out loudly. She was rebuking the people sitting at the last table in the classroom. Although they were saying it was not their fault, nobody believed them and they were severely rebuked. Maybe you think that firecracker retailers are to blame for everything. Not really. When there were no firecrackers, pupils would explode aerosol can bombs. We would place an aerosol can over a fire and it would explode. In a matter of seconds the fire was gone. I remember how enthusiastic we were while looking for aerosol cans while playing truant during the last lesson at school. They all would explode differently. Some would hiss, others would lift up like rockets. The most desirable can was a Jaclovas can. Such cans exploded the loudest. A trick with nitrogen. One day a teacher showed us an interesting experiment during a chemistry lesson. She cut off a small piece of nitrogen and dropped it into water. As a result, nitrogen was sliding along the surface of the water. It was hissing and it was burning. I was wondering, what would happen if I was to drop a big piece of nitrogen into water? Right till the end of the lesson I was wondering how to do it unnoticeably. During break, I noticed that a big piece of nitrogen was left unattended. There was a big bowl for washing test tubes. It was filled with water, so I decided to act quickly. I put all the nitrogen on the table into the bowl with water. I didn't expect such an active chemical reaction. The nitrogen started hissing and later it exploded sparkling all over. Pupils in the classroom got very scared. A stun gun made from capacitors. To plug in a capacitor and scare girls away was a pretty popular entertainment back then. Although it didn't shut circuit much, yet girls were very afraid of charged and even discharged capacitors. One day, one underachiever was trying to plug in his capacitor to charge it, as all of a sudden something went wrong. It shut circuited and electricity was cut off in the classroom. Teachers severely rebuked him, and from that moment on, they were strictly controlled. At that time, it was also very popular to throw different stuff on the power line. Usually, we would throw unfavored people's second pair of shoes, backpacks and other stuff. It was not easy to throw stuff there, but it was even more difficult to get it back. I do not know why, but back then, it was very popular and a very cool entertainment. You could sit in your classroom, look at a pair of sneakers hanging on the power line through the window and you could probably say that it was your job. There is a chain of shoes hanging on the power line in the residential quarter down the Gornikov Avenue. Unfortunately, the creator of this creator work remains unknown. It is also a mystery whether it is a flash mob, somebody's unconventional way of dedication or just sort of a vandalism. Whatever is the case, the joke has caused lots of harm. This is a misuse of the power line electricity run through. So I decided to make something bigger. During lessons of the Russian language, I was devising a huge plan about how to throw something really big on the power lines, in order even for crooks not to get it. Back then, I didn't manage to do it, but many years after that, I devised a unique method that allowed me to almost effortlessly to hang a heavy display on the highest power line in our city. For the sake of better results, I attached a bulb and antennas from Vice to it that were glowing and cracking under high voltage. Although it happened after I finished school, I still didn't have a camera to shoot this. I was very surprised when I got to know that my hanging display became very popular in the internet. Twinixi, Peekaboo, Yaplakal, YouTube, there were lively discussions across these platforms. Locals could not understand why the display was hung there. Others were wondering why it was hung there. This is far from over. There were lots of other entertainments of students from the 90s. Kapitoshka, carbide, pistols, cartridges, self-shooting catapults, etc. I will tell you all about it in the next video.